on my property. You didn't win shit in my yard. Wait, 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 I, wait, wait, all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and we have the man, the myth, the legend of the Ever Potomac, Jeff Green. <laughs> Thank you so much for being back on the show, dude. Sure. Um, you're fishing through a hurricane we were talking about just before we started recurring, like recording yeah. here. Um, I, I fished. Um, I took some people out when it was uh, raining. Really? Oh, yeah. How was that? It was okay. Um, the, the the weather was fine. I mean, as long as you have rain gear on, mm -hmm. it wasn't terrible. It wasn't dangerous out. I mean, it, it's yeah. not pleasant either, but. We didn't get uh, hit very hard. Huh? We didn't get hit like too, too hard with the hurricane, which was nice. No, but it. Um, if you watch it on live radar, it got over top of Maryland and then just spun around for days. Mm -hmm. You know, how how that affect everything? Uh, well, it, it it made the fishing better because it um, it uh, brought the river up, but it brought it up gradually. Okay, it, it didn't come up like uh, super fast. It came up uh, gradually, so. Uh, the water never got uh, too dirty. It didn't brown out. Um, your kitchen absolute donks. Um, I honestly want to kind of get right into that. Let me share some of these things here. Uh, boom. Good God, man. That looks like Susquehanna, like Lake Erie size fish. One, uh, that one on top is 21 inches. It, it's not a real good photo. I mean, you know, kind of something's taken away from it because of the, uh, because I, I, I use my cell phone and it's, it's sitting in the chair and it's pointed up at me. So pretty but, nice one though. Yeah. But, um, it could look better in a picture, but yeah, no, that, that was a 21 inch small mouth. Jeez, dude. That's freaking awesome. That one right there was caught on a, um, let's see what it was. This, it was a jerk. It was, a, um, it was a lucky craft jerk bait. I'll, as a matter of fact, I'll show you which one. Guys, that is a really nice small mouth for the Potomac River. It's, it was, nice. uh, can you see that okay, Thomas? Sure can. So that's it's almost the, uh, a uh, perch colored. Yeah, the northern yellow perch. They used to have one called Aurora perch. Yeah, but, I remember uh, that one back in the day. Yeah, it, it hmm. was on a pointer 78. Oh, that fish was, um, it was, uh, I, I actually have the video on, uh, on, um, just a, a, after I caught it, I, I did a little, short little video, and it was in an, um, in an eddy, an area that was pulled up. with uh, the, the water was pulled up. Are you looking for a really cool marketing opportunity to help grow your business? What would you think if your business logo ended up on every YouTube video we create? Plus, you get a commercial slot for every single podcast. If you're interested in helping support our channel, please reach out to me at fishingthedmv at gmail.com. The email address, again, is fishingthedmv at gmail.com. I must have, uh, oh, the, uh, nope. I guess I didn't put it on Facebook. I probably have on an Instagram then. That's an absolute monster. Oh, that's it right there. He's just, he's just chilling in the live well though. That is a big walleye. Oh no, that was a walleye. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely confused. I don't know how many times I've, uh, um, put some of these posts up. Well, that is a good problem to have when you've caught so many big fish that you lose track. That's um, a really good problem to have. Yeah, the the uh, other day, the guy that was in the blue shirt, I, th I think it was. I mean, we caught, what we catch? Uh, four fish over um, 18 and above. And then um, one of them, it's a fish story, but one of them got away from us. He hooked it on a spinnerbait, and um, it uh, it came off, unfortunately, but it was big. It was bigger than the other ones. Okay, well, t like paint the scene here. So, is this like early in the morning that you guys launch? Haven't caught no, anything? No, this was yet? afternoon. Okay, this was in the afternoon. It was um, so it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before, and uh, so the water was a little bit um, uh, dirtier, stained. However, you want to say it, it wasn't muddy, and um, we pulled up into this spot. So the spots that there's an eddy, there's an island. It kicks off the shoreline. This little scrub island kicks off. And usually, if the water's high enough, it it create it, it. You can see the island, but this at this point, it, it wasn't. It was just it was just a big pool of water, and the water was kicking out around it. 
it was a, a swift swift water okay so i pulled in in the eddy side of it but i went up the shoreline remember i was telling you i ride the shoreline yeah so i wrote i rode the shoreline all the way up he actually got drone footage of the fish coming off his hook that is so freaking cool yeah um i don't know if he's gonna send it to me though but uh um so we pulled up there and he threw in a couple times and he didn't get hit. I threw him with a spinner bait and I caught one that was 18. And then um he threw right after me. And that's when he hooked that real big one. So the spinner bait's been what's playing too, then. Yeah, yeah. The the spinner bait. Yep. Uh he was using a, a war eagle spinner bait. Um, let me see if I have that uh color. Guys, I don't think sure. I have it out here with me. <clears throat> and so, guys, what we were talking I put, about. I put all those uh I put all those uh spinner baits um uh in my uh, boat. So guys, uh, last time we had Jeff on, we were talking about just a strategy for like approaching the river. Is there any way to zoom in on this picture? Sure can. Hold on a second. Let me know if that's any better. Yeah. A little bit more. And then bring it. Yeah, there you go. And then your Kurt. Yep. So, uh, see where the white water is. Yep. Right Right there. Go down on that shoreline. Go down. You know, so just take like, it down. So see down in that area down there where you just yeah. put that red mark. The area, I mean, that's the that's the best I can uh, relate it to. That's what that area looked like. The water just kicked out around it. Okay. So you and, had and um, there was a pattern that there had to be there had to be an area where the water was shallow that was kicking out around it, and there was uh, small rocks. It was flat, and um, it was just uh, gravel, and the water would kick out around, and then it would drop down into deeper water. And those mm. fish were sitting in the current because they're feeding. What What is the water depth right now? Uh, the water is like four feet at the Edwards Ferry gauge. So it's what, like two something at the uh, uh, point of rocks gauge. A lot of people use that point of rocks gauge. Okay. So, so that's why that, I always get both of them. Is that good for this time of year? Is that high? Is that low? Um, It's, it's a little bit high. It's not really high, but uh, I mean, the water averages, uh, like the normal water level in the rivers around or should be at Edwards Ferry would read about three and a half feet, maybe. Okay. Um, but no, that, that, that higher water, I mean, that water got up to almost five feet at the gauge. That's incredible. So that's good. And, and so with that influx of water and, and we're getting, you know, when this episode comes out, we're in October, we're really starting to slowly get into the fall. And I would say for us in this area, would you say the fall bite really is at a hundred percent full fire late October to November ish? Would you consider yeah. that like prime? So we're, we're guys right now, we're now just slowly getting into the fall pattern. What do the fish typically do this time of year compared to like in the summertime? Well, they're, um, they're going to, uh, you're going to start seeing them in packs groups and they're going to be in those areas. Like I just, I just mentioned, and they're going to be feeding. And then this was just kind of a short glimpse of what they're going to do later on when the when the water uh, temperature just isn't going to ever come back up. You know, it's mm-hmm. just going to gradually keep falling. I uh, mean, we got down to what fifty eight degrees water temperature, and um, I thought maybe that was because because of the uh, cold weather. I just thought maybe it, it might not ever come back up until you know next next spring. I thought it was just going to keep getting colder o- over time, but it's going to come back up. It'll probably get up to the mid sixties and then, you know, um, all the way through October, it, you, you'll start seeing the water temperature just gradually drop again. But that, that magic number is somewhere in like 55 to 60 degree range where they just go nuts. It's crazy. Cause like the size you're catching now, like from the pictures that you were sending me and the ones we just showed, and I'll, I'll throw them back up on the screen for you guys. Dude, those are some, those are some studs. Those are some nice fish that you're catching. And what do you think the difference was? What made them flip on? Because I know for a while there in the summertime, you're saying like, you know, you, you can catch the, the the numbers, but not necessarily all the big ones. And then all of a sudden, man, dude, you just caught some freaking tanks. They're, um, the, the water level comes up and they feed. Uh-huh. And then um, and then water temperature. The water temperature um, really dictates their, uh, I, I guess, how, um, how aggressive they're going to turn out to be. Okay, gotcha. So as that water temperature stops dipping, guys, like, you know, the fishing is going to get better and better. And then are you yeah. usually 
targeting these things with moving baits? Are you throwing? Yeah. I'll tell you what, when, when the water starts getting cold like this, you can start getting away with bigger baits. Did you see that crankbait when you first pulled up uh, the videos? Me... And it shows me holding a crankbait. It's in this video right here I just posted. Um, that crankbait right there. That crankbait's kind of big, but it's only two and a half inches, but it's real fat. Okay. I had a I caught one that was 18 inches on that today. Really? Yeah. He that swiped color? that at three times. Whew. But the 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 problem with the crankbait is it's it's very situational. You have to have the right conditions. Or you're just letting it swim through the water. What conditions do you think? What um conditions? higher water. Higher water. Higher water, probably some stained water um and uh cooler temperatures like we have now is it just the higher water or do you is there a clarity factor too do you want it to have like a little bit of chalk to it or do you want it gin clear yeah no you you, you want it to be uh you want it to be a little bit dirty stained however yeah. you want to say it like that real dark green color because that water like, like in the background you. now you see in the background there yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. Fat, you want it stained yeah. to the point to where they can't really see you and that's the fat, that's a Lucky Craft Fat CB, good Lord. That's BDS2. I forget what the BDS stands for. I, I can't remember all the. Uh, Sounds um, like some adult website, but okay. Fat yeah. B yeah. BDS. <laughs> it's, it's a good, it, it dives three feet. Oh, nice. That's perfect for the river. Yeah, and you, you can run it real slow. Speed it up, slow, speed it up. And you know, that there's a certain way to throw these crankbaits to get them to strike them. Um. You know, you could just throw it out if they're really aggressive and and just reel it back and and they'll they'll hit it. But um, if uh, if you play with the bait a little bit in the water, speed it up, slow it down, speed it up, uh, jerk on the rod a little bit, stop it, let it start lifting back up a little bit, and then start it again. That seems to really um, irritate them. Uh, what's your setup for that? Are you throwing it on a, on a heavy action rod, medium light? No, medium I just heavy? throw it on a, on a medium, um, medium rod, seven foot medium rod. Um, and, uh, since I guide, I, I don't, I don't carry, um, bait casters with me. Uh, oh. cause, uh, most people would have a hard time throwing the bait casters, you know? Um, so, uh, some people bring bait casters on the boat, but I, I don't cause, cause it'd probably cost me more in fishing line than it would, uh, yeah, pretty much. anything else. So I'm using a um, 2500 series reel hmm. and uh, um, medium action rod and uh, braided line with somewhere between 10 and 12 pound monofilament or that, uh, uh, what's that stuff called? Copolymer. Copolymer. Yeah. People do not give spinning rods enough props for its ability to handle different lures. Like you can throw such an assortment of baits on it. Everyone in the bass world always thinks it's like you can only drop shot and maybe like Ned rig. No, I mean, you can rod. do everything with a spinning rod. You can. You really can. I mean, you know, uh, within reason. Um, but no, you, in anything um, like like what we do out on the river, you just need a spinning reel. No. I mean, because there's all the, always that element of, of um, finesse that has to be involved in it with the smallmouth for some – for just – I feel like for some reason. Dude, it's you, so you funny. have to be able to talk them into it, you yeah. know? Like it could be a 10 pound smallmouth, and you still have to like, like finagle it with like four pound line. It I mean, that so crazy that one you just saw me drop in the water. Mm -hmm. That fish um, came at that lure three times before it grabbed it today. Wow. They I get, saw him. He came up, fire, he came up the first time and he, uh, he swiped it. Second time he swiped it, and I was like, oh man. So I, I killed it, and then I started bringing it back again real slow. And I stopped it, and then, and I, you know, I I cranked. I have a pretty high speed. I have a, a Revo Rocket, um, yeah. Abu Garcia, a, a seven seven to one ratio, and I, I cranked it real quick one other time, and then he came up and he grabbed it. Dude, that is awesome. And he, and he rolled on it. You know, he rolled on it hard. And and those um that that lure that that you just showed on there, um, I mean that thing got some nasty hooks. Absolute nasty hooks. Yeah, those hooks are are just vicious. Dude, so yeah, everyone go on out there and get that. So what are your favorite color crankbaits this time of year? Uh, though that right there or um anything anything pretty natural, you know? Um like you have in the background here. I mean, the ones that I sell are pretty natural. I mean, grab a couple. All right. Let's see here. Oh shit. Okay. 
Let me grab one of these. So look, you know, stuff like this, you know, the crawdad patterns. Um, this is that um, American shad color that they have. It's pretty popular. Can you see that okay? Yeah, perfect. Wow, that looks nice. Yeah, and then um and then something something, you know, like this right here. I mean, mm. I'm not uh there's nothing spectacular that um color-wise that I'm using. I'm just using something that that pretty much is going to mimic anything in the water, you know? Yeah. Uh, except for that chartreuse colored one. Uh for whatever reason, smallmouth like that color, that chartreuse color. I have no idea why. Dude, I'm not, here we go. Let me see if I can, like this one right here. So I am also called a tackle addict, but it's better than doing crack, I guess. So this one right <laughs> here. Now I go Strike King just because it's a little cheaper. Yeah. But uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have a event, um, you know, before the year's out. Yeah. Before the year's out, it's the same thing that I just showed you. Same thing. But before the year's out, I'll have Strike Kings available too. And this one right here. Here. I'll have 1.5s available. This is the, I think this is the series three, and it has a little bit deeper diving bill, and it'll, it'll go about five feet. But then, yeah, that color there, I love that color too. But yeah, this, I, was, I, I like that color. Yeah, and I'm just look at the to... name on the back of it. Can, can you see the name? Let me move it right there. Look what it's yes. called. Flake, flake. I have no idea what it is. Flake, flake, kabalk. Flake, flake, kabuki. Kabalk. Kabuki. It sounds like a gyro place. Gill. Yeah, Kabuki Gill. I mean, these hey hey these baits are straight out of Japan, man. What do you think it is with all these J Japanese companies? Like, why is it Japan pumps out so many cool baits? I think that their um, attention to detail is is spot on when it comes to fishing. You know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you have you ever if if you I mean, this is way off the topic, but if you've ever seen their um, their like motorcycles from the early '80s, mid '80s, um. I mean, they're just completely over engineered. Mm. They'll have four carburetors on a motor that only has 48 horsepower on it. Holy crap. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, in, in an American car, we'll have 300 horsepower with one, one carburetor. <laughs> you know, so th their attention to detail is so good. I mean, their paint jobs, I think, are fantastic on all their stuff, whether it's oh, like yeah. swim baits, crank baits, like it's insane. Like spy baits, like it's insane the scale quality, the reflectiveness that you can get off their baits. I mean, I, I think you could basically just throw black or white or brown or green on a on a bait, throw a couple black stripes on it, and you'll catch fish the same way. But yeah, the, these uh, these baits are uh, uh, they're, they're they're really nice looking. They, they really are. I mean, and then, I, think, um, I think there's sometimes that it actually does help. But I mean, no. this is this is about as crazy as I get, man. If you can see this, yeah. Let me let me adjust the camera real quick. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So that's a. It looks like a bandit. With a Sartreus blueback, yeah, that's exactly what it's called too. I love Bandit. They're very simple with the names. It's just we'll put the colors as the names. Whereas Japan is like yeah. making some kind of recipe dish. Yeah, dude, yeah, you, it sounds I, like something I, you're gonna eat. I love your wall. That's really nice. Like, is that is that is that the same wall in your last episode, or is this a different part of your bass project? No, this is this the same. It's the same wall. It's a, it's where I keep all the uh, stuff for my store. Okay, yeah, dude, that's pretty sick. I like that. And then I have um, plastic baits and stuff somewhere else that how, I sell. How's, I the store, make. how's the store going? It's going pretty good. It's um, you know, it's going to take a while for it to get off the ground. I have no uh, crazy uh, expectations, um, you know, right off the bat. But it's um, uh, I think it complements the guide service pretty good. Is there something that you you really are getting excited to carry that you're not like or it's on your list of things to carry? I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna carry Z-Man stuff. Dude. Oh, oh, you like this? These are the Panfish Ned rigs. Oh, those are sweet, dude. Like, okay, this is the, here's a pen. Just give you kind of an example here. Are Look they two how, inches? Dude, it, it's less than that. So I don't know if that that can like that can tell you there. It's about an inch and a half. Oh man, those would be those would be uh, killer smallmouth baits, dude. Killer smallmouth crappie, like, and, and I just this is elastic stuff. Like for guiding, it's got to be fantastic to use elastic things, so you're not like constantly replacing it. Yeah, and I'm gonna have um, the Z the, the chatter baits too. Those would be good too. I'll carry the th uh, thir um, three eighth ounce and a um, half ounce. When do you like to throw a spinnerbait versus a chatter bait? I feel like they're like the same thing. 
Yeah, it, you know, it, it depends when you're fishing. Like um, the other day, we we caught them on chatter baits too. Oh, really? You know, okay. it, yeah. Uh, the the water when, when I like to throw them is when the water's um, dirtier than um, mm. what we see right now. And um, sometimes they'll hit the chatter bait over a spinner bait. You just have to find out which one they want. So you will have-, you have those conditions: high water, <clears throat> high water with um, w- with a heavy stain or borderline brown water so basically you'll have like if you have multiple people in the boat you'll have one person throwing a chatterbait one person throwing a spinnerbait that type of deal Mm -hmm. yeah now when does the crankbait come into play then in that whole circumstance because you're kicking Uh, in those conditions okay same conditions yeah and and those conditions but but the uh, um you know the bottom of the river everything has to be different i mean you can't be throwing that crankbait in where there's trees and and you know sticks and um if there's grass in there, because it it's just it's just gonna pick all that stuff up and it's gonna get snagged. So you know that's why I said earlier that that crankbait is just very situational. Yeah, and but the thing is, I just I absolutely love throwing crankbaits for smallmouth. Um, I feel like I don't know if you see this as much, but I feel like smallmouth more so than largemouth, they'll swipe at baits and they won't hit it. Mm-hmm. And so when you're throwing a chatterbait or a spinnerbait. I mean, they'll beat the crap out of the blades on a, on a spinnerbait. Now, I'll, oh, I'll bring this up too. So when I told you that that um, we lost that big one um, two days ago on a trip, yeah. Remember, I said that the guy, the guy lost it. These damn s- smallmouth. What they'll do is they'll grab the blades. They're not grabbing the skirt. Oh, They're wow. grabbing the blades, and you can see it. And then um, you can tell because you'll catch some of these smallmouth. You catch if if anyone's ever wondered. Sometimes you'll catch these smallmouth under their chin. And you're thinking to yourself, how in the hell are they getting hooked under their chin? That's because they're grabbing the blades. Okay. And they'll hold on to those blades, and that's why they come off of the spinnerbait so easy. Like when you throw out and you hook into a real good one, and you're reeling them in, and you just, you just feel like you have them hooked real well. We well, don't have them hooked at all. He just has a hold of those blades really, really uh, tight. Vicious. And then uh, he just decides, um, I don't like this anymore, and he, look, and he lets go. And that's why – so one thing that I like to do – is I do like to adjust, and this is because I'll fish tournaments and stuff. I'll switch to triple grips uh, uh-huh. on, on my crankbaits because it, it has that inward facing hook, and it's uh-huh. just a lot harder for them to. Sw- so when they're jumping a lot, it's a lot harder for them to kind of like throw that hook. Um, yeah. For you tournament guys out there, that is a nice little adjustment that I like to do with my crankbaits. I do it for all my crankbaits, but especially when you're dealing with smallmouth. And I was fishing that kayak tournament that I finished in the top. I think it was the top twelve. They would all jump as soon as you stick them. They go straight up, and switching to that. I didn't lose a single one. So just that's what they do with spinner baits. They, they jump, they come right out of the water. Yeah, dude. I mean, a a real big one will come out pretty much, um, uh, right away. Now, are you throwing, um, spinning rod, same thing with the spinner bait, chatter bait and crank bait, or do you adjust it at all with line size and things like that? No, no, no. They're going to be on a medium size rod with that 12, uh, 2,500 or 2000 series reel. Gotcha. Gotcha. I think, uh, I think that show, uh, that Abu Garcia is a 2,500. (laughs) nice and medium rod can handle that too that's pretty cool oh yeah yeah the the meat yeah yep so now i mean hey those those mediums those medium lights landed a four foot long um musky i mean that that really opened my eyes a lot this spring when i was uh, looking at you know i was um with the rods and stuff i'm like well there's no way those smallmouth have a prayer on a medium light rod if we just landed this thing and then you're also you said you're catching some big walleye now too. Was that just a were you were you targeting it or what happened? No, 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 no. Targeting? They're they're um they just come with the high water. Really? And they pull in and, and they're in the same place as the bass are because they're feeding. I mean, I, I guess they have the same uh behavior as a uh, as bass when it comes to feeding. But they can just tolerate colder temperatures, you know, way beyond what a what a smallmouth can. And did you just did you, so you're just bass fishing when you caught that big one? Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, I'm not, I'm never surprised. I'm just, uh, um, it's exciting to catch them though. Cause sometimes you look into a big one that's how 25 many, inches or plus. How many walleye have you caught this year? Uh, I don't know. Do- over a dozen. Oh, wow. That's here and there. That's, that's not bad at all. No. I, one trip we caught five. Dang. Yeah. Five bass fishing. I mean, and that's fun, man. 
Yeah, like I mean, that's the thing too. Is like we had uh, guys on from the Virginia Depart, uh, the Maryland Department of Wildlife Resources, and they talked about their stocking programs for walleye, and they're really trying to to stock and, and get a good, healthy population there. But I think a lot of times you 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 you're supposed to catch them supposedly behind dams and stuff like that, like big slack water places. Yeah, like probably. That. But I'll tell you what, um, in my experience, they they move around a lot in high water. Really? Yeah, that they just start they just start um you know moving around like uh what's his name? Croc- Crocodile Dundee said. What, what did what did he say in that movie? Oh, he says he goodness. he went on a um what do they call it? Oh my god. I can't even think I'm about draw, it. Drawing a blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crocodile Dundee. I, yeah. Um crap. A walkabout. Yeah, walk that's, what the, uh, that's what the wall I do. They go on a walkabout, man. They just wander. So in these high water situations that we're dealing with right now on the river, so are, do you pretty much ignore when you initially start fishing the middle of the re- of the river and just focus on the banks? No, because they'll be out in the middle too. So you want to you want to just start hitting these spots. I mean, I've been out there long enough that that um, and you know I'm out there so often that uh, if the water comes up six or seven inches or something like that, I know certain areas where I'm like, well. That water is going to be deeper there now, mm-hmm. and it's probably going, they're probably going to be whole, there's probably going to be fish there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So then, looking at, let me get back to our trusty maps here. So let's we'll start at Algonquian Park, right back down here. Yeah, zoom that, zoom that map in. Oh, you use, um, can you zoom one in that looks more like a, a GPS map, like a, a, yep. a light, more uh, um, realistic map. So this right here is Navionics. If you like this one, you can stick with this one, or I could switch it to Google Earth. Yeah, switch it to Google Earth real quick. And I'll give you an example. So here's a Gonkian. And then go go up river. This this should this should really show on here. And I'll explain, I'll I'll show you what uh, the the pattern was. And go go to White's Ferry. Keep going up. Edwards. Where, where is White's? Buffalo Park. Yeah, zoom zoom in right there where you are. This should be whites right in here. It's gonna be it's gonna be around there somewhere. Yeah, Harrison Island. Go up a little bit further. There's a little island just at the very top of here it. Here it is. Zoom in and go down some on that screen. Go down river. See that little island right there? These two. Yeah, that little island. If you keep zooming in the best you can, and and um, go over to that island again and go down a little bit. So yeah, right there, right there. Um, bring your cursor over. Gosh, to my right. Yep, keep going. Yep, right there, and go and go down just a, just a tiny bit to the shoreline right there by the island. Right here. All right, go up. Keep going up a little bit, a little bit more. Right there. Mark that. Right there. Boom. Yeah, mark that area. Like you know, just put a. Um, and, and zoom in so we don't lose it. We are zoomed. Okay. So you see that spot? You see how the water's kicking around that and you can tell yeah. that there's um that there's rocks there. That's a um that's the type of area I'm talking about. And they'll push out into those areas and into the into the um swift water away from the eddy. Mm, let's get this up here. See if I can like do it on it real quick for you guys. There we go. So yeah, right in there. So yeah, I don't know if you guys can tell this on the live stream. Um, I gotta get Google Pro. I really do need to pay for that. But yeah, right there, right where you put that red line would be your current seam. And then what you guys can't tell is I'll mark this in another color. There's the rocks are right about here. Oh, that's the wrong color. There we go. So the rocks are right about here, and then the red line is the current seam. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so when you're catching, when you're staging the boat, are you down here casting up right on the seam or are you out here more into the main river and casting across like this? Well, and that, in this one particular area, if I was going to fish that spot, cause I know that spot real well, um, you wouldn't want to go up into the eddy, into the shore and uh, next to the Island. Very, um, you wouldn't want to go up in there. You'd probably spook the fish. You want to, where that red line is, you'd want to back off that red line 10 10, 15 feet. Okay. So if the red line is the juice, is the seam right here. Yeah. You're, you're saying so from here, from here uh-huh. all the way, oops, sorry. From here all the way into the shore is the absolute juice then. 
right? Yeah. So this whole area. I mean, that water's cranking through there too. Yeah. So then you're gonna put po- you're gonna position your boat out here. Yep, and then I'm gonna go up river and sit parallel with it and start okay. at the head, head of that uh, that um, uh, current seam. Got Eddie, you. whatever you want to call it. Gotcha, gotcha. So then, how if, if if you're moving these, and especially since you you have you're blessed with the jet boat, and you're running downstream to a spot. So let's just let's flip it around, and well, actually, this works out perfectly. So let's say you launch from Whites, and then you uh-huh. have the spot that you want to hit. Are you going to go and fish it going downstream, or are you going to drive past it and then work up? No, I'm going to go. I'm going to have to. Well, I'm going to have to go down past it because it gets real shallow there. So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come up real slow, and I'm going to and I'm going to position myself at the head of that uh, that that eddy right there where those uh, colored lines are. You put okay, and then from there with a um, spot lock, I'll spot lock myself in the uh, uh, real swift water, and then um, I'll slowly uh, back down off that um, that current seam and fish. And bring that lure from the still water into the swift water. Okay. And they'll be right. They would be if they're there. They're, they're right where that currency meets that still water. How long would you give this spot? Um. You know it. Spitball. It depends on um, how I feel that day. I mean, if you're not getting them with spinner baits, you know, if the conditions are. Uh, the, you know, uh, higher water and the water's, um, heavily stained or something. You want to try chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, and then some plastics. So I don't know, 15 minutes in that spot. And then you just, you'd start creeping down the, um, uh, that current seam all the way down to the point. Dude, that's not bad at all though. Time-wise. Like I, w- I was thinking you're going to say something like way, way longer. No, no. Nope. All right. Let's get this one here. And if, if we get into a spot like that, if if I pulled up and um if, if I'm real real confident that there's fish sitting there, I won't even you know I, I wouldn't throw in at all. But so if never... if I pull up and then um the customers haven't caught fish in that spot, I'll throw something completely different from what they're throwing. Like I'll throw a plastic. And then if I hook up with one, I'll just have them switch over and then they just keep fishing. So in this area right here, what we have highlighted so far, guys, in this one little stretch, this is this is why you get a pro like Jeff on to talk about it. That right where this red line is, let me mark that real quick. Sorry about that. So right where this red line is, that is a high percentage area. That's a that's that's almost a um, that's a type of area. Yeah, yeah. A, a type yep. of area where you have this this rock jetty spewing off this island that creates a wing dam or a wing dam creates a seam right there in this area. Yep. And then if you look at this area though, I also see a couple of other things that really do stick out to me. Um, right down here, you have this blow through. Yep. That creates this seam right here. And then actually, you know what? This is actually important for people that have like moved to the area and don't fish the rivers a lot. How would you explain what a seam is? The current steam is going to be so. See at the very top of that island, the northern part of that island, the tip, right here. I would consider that the uh, current break. Okay. And then the um, the uh, the seam is created right then and there, and it's coming down, and it's going to kick off right where you where you put that um, that red dot right there. Right here. Okay. It kicks out. Yeah, and then um, then that's where you have that eddy. The current seam is going right past the eddy. Gotcha, the water. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, a, a current seam is like if you have a rock in the middle of the wall, uh, middle of the river, and the river hits the as it hits the rock, it goes around the rock on the left and right side, and that swift water that's created that goes around the rock, those are seams. So with that said, we have multiple seams in this area that you could hit. Um, yeah. And I think we have like a, a rock right there. Things. When does the front of an island versus the back of the island play? Um, or do you sometimes they're up at the uh, head of the island and the, that island right there has a flat on it. It's almost like a flat. It gets real shallow up there. And then there's a couple uh, spots where the, where the bottom of the river, the contour of the river gets deep and then shallow again. And they'll sit up there sometimes. If you're, um, if you're catching fish on spinner baits, it's worth stopping at the head of an island, the top of an island, the, the northernmost tip of an island and fishing it because there might be fish just swimming around on that flat. 
So it'd be like this area right here. Yeah. That's really cool. That is really wild. So then how much uh, at this, this stage, this stage of the year, uh, I know in the summertime, you said that you drive a lot to try to find active areas. Uh, are we getting to the time of year where the fish are starting to bunch up a little bit more that you don't have to drive around as much or is it still pretty? Yeah. You know, um, we, we had a spot two days ago that, um, that had, uh, I don't know, we caught six fish in one spot. Wow. So, um, so, I mean, that's showing you that, that they're, that they're, uh, and they're fish of all sizes, big ones and small ones. Um, so that kind of tells you that there's probably more fish there too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the Potomac river for you. It'll, um, uh, she'll give you a few fish and then she'll be like, no, you got to go find another spot. So then right, <laughs> right now, how's the river? I mean, I guess just, uh, a, a high level, uh, look at it. Like how's the river fishing right now compared to last fall? Is it about the same? Is it? Yeah, no, it's the same. I mean, it's the, the quality of fish is, is there. And uh, you just have to you have to hit it on the um, on a good on on the right day, and when it, what what that day is, I, I I never know until I'm on there. And then some days you'll have quality fish, some days you'll just have a quantity of fish, some days you'll have both. Is the quantity going to? When does the quantity start going down and the quality start going up? I know, like when well, the, um, sometime in uh, beginning of November. Okay. Those smaller fish, those like twelve inch fish, they just like disappear. I, I don't know where they go or wh how they survive, but those smaller fish, you don't see them until spring, until it, it warms up again. I think they get ate. I think a lot of them get eaten by by other 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 critters too. Uh, yeah, they um they, they must um uh, they must be able to go and uh and just sit there and and uh, have some serious patience and wait for it to warm up again. So so then with, with the river breakdown, let's start at uh, let's start at the Leesburg area. Um, how how is the Rees Leesburg area of the Upper Potomac looking right now? Is it is it pretty swollen? Is it still choked with grass? Have you been fishing there? Oh no, it, it, yeah, there's a lot of grass. There's in, in certain areas, there's a lot of grass. There's a lot of grass down by Seneca. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, uh, uh, there's not as much grass around Edwards Ferry. And then once you get up above, um, mouth of Monocacy, south of uh, point of rocks, there's a lot of grass. Really? Yeah. I didn't really think there'd be that much grass up there. Yeah. There's a lot of grass. Let me pull that up. <laughs> There's Nolan Ferry. There's Point of Rocks. There we go. Dude, you can even tell the watercolor up here a lot more, too, between the left and the right side. <laughs> I wonder how often they take pictures. So they're supposed to do it pretty frequently. I'd, I'd have to Google it and check, but I know with Google Earth Pro, which I really want to get a uh, subscription to, you can go back in history and see like the latest picture changes so you can check the difference in water um like water level which is huge so guys that fish lakes all the time especially for like tournaments and stuff you, uh -huh. can, take, you can look at like lake Anna as an example and with google earth pro you can go back in history like three or four aerial photographies to see like oh this is how much it's lost water this is how much water is gained this is a stump in the water that i couldn't see before and that way you can like take and and waypoint different things without even like going to the lake which is really cool um and with here it's interesting to just see like the difference between the left and the right side when it comes to flow rates i think and also just the color of the water right now and you can also see the grass mm -hmm. look at all that grass that is so cool god what that a cool right thing. side that right side the bottom's really hard on the maryland side do it's just usually, like one big sheet of rock do you usually run the right side or, or the left side um well, it depends on how, how high the water is, but no, I'll, I'll run the, um, I'll run the left side, but you don't want to be going up into that area that you're just showing right there, unless you got some water in the river. Oh, right. We're getting way up there guys. Sorry about that. Let me get to Edwards Ferry. Cause I want to show something. If this is Edward. Yeah, this is it. Cause there used to be a massive, there it is. That's why that's White's Ferry. Yeah. White's Ferry. Right. This is Nolan's Ferry. See, okay. Nolan. Yeah. Okay. Because there is a, there used to be when I was a kid, and we'd fish this all the time. There used to be this thing jutting out, and there still is. Yeah, this massive thing that juts right out there, and then you see these shelvings, and, and that's something that I wanted to talk to you about. And we will we'll bring up a picture. Um, how do you fish the shelvings 
that are on the Potomac River. And this will be good for anybody that just fishes like the Shenandoah, whatever. And it's really like this picture here. But I like to picture yeah. it submerged where you have the shelving come across like this. You have a shelf here, a shelf here. You have them across here. And then you have what I'm assuming is, is it deeper water in between these? And if um, it Sometimes. A lot of the times it is, yeah. Yep. And then so and then sometimes you, it's it's just really shallow. And then so are you are you keying in, in the fall? Are you keying in on the super shallow stuff like you would in the summertime? Or are you keying in on the first drop? No, you want to find um you'd want to find a spot. You'd probably want to hit that with uh try hitting it with plastics or something like that. But okay. you'd want to pull up in there and you want to you'd want to find a spot where the contour of the river drops and gets deep. You know, gotcha. like it goes from a foot to four feet. Okay, so you're looking for depth right now. Yeah. And that's why it's okay, that makes so much sense. And that's why And then you can hit you can hit those uh that white water area. You can hit those areas with spinner baits too. Oh, you can? Yeah, you can hit them with spinner baits, chatter baits, and um jerk baits. So with that with that said, when when is pure jerk bait season coming to play? Let me pull this up right here. When the water's in the fifties. Okay. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, I'm really getting excited for that. Especially, I mean, you can catch uh, you can catch uh, smallmouth bass in uh, water in the 30s with jerk baits. Oh, I mean, I know, like just from fishing. Um, crap, Shenandoah River. Where is that deep pool? Damn it, Riverton. Like just fishing Riverton, like, and you can throw deep jerk baits on on Riverton where it's dammed up, and it, you can absolutely murder them, especially in the winter time. Um, but there is that there is that that cool hour that a couple of weeks between like, I think you're right. Like late October and November where you can throw either soft or hard jerk baits and absolutely just smoke them. And it's not like this weird, like jerk wait an hour jerk wait an hour. It's more of like, you can just pull it as hard as you want and you'll absolutely just trash them. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't say anything about those soft jerk baits or, or, um, soft jerk baits or, um, flukes, whatever you want to call them at whatever time, however you're using them. But, um, uh, they're uh they're killers too have you been using this at all lately um no no i haven't been really throwing the uh uh flukes very much um i probably should start messing around with them a little bit more the um you know soft jerk baits what right now um you know this one baits are working Ooh, oh you're making just a happen. three inch four inch swim bait how do you rig your swim baits just and with what? a ball head jig what types of swim baits do you like to use this time of year? Um, oh, like a swing impact style. Okay. Kytec. So the type really doesn't matter. Um, it's just the size more or less versus like brand. Yeah, the length, three inch to four, three inch to four inch, and yeah. um, and you know just find what what speed they want that thing at. Dude, that sounds like that's just my type of party. Um, let me think. I got one more thing here. Oh, Monocacy. That's the thing. Cause I love to talk about this river It's eventually I'll, th I'll fish it guys. I promise you, I really want to do that. I'm going to go trout fishing tomorrow. So that video will eventually be out there, but, um, Monocacy river. Uh, how's that been looking? Have you been able to actually fish that? I, I went out of it today. Oh, you did. Yeah. I, I went out of the mouth of Monocacy. I've been going out of that for the past three days. Oh, dang. Okay. And, um, uh, the, the water doesn't look too bad. I just haven't been, I haven't focused on it at all. Because um, I've been trying, I've been going to other spots on the river. Now, are you picking the Monocacy boat ramp because it's closer to where you're fishing, or just yeah. because you like that boat ramp because it's closer to where you live, or something? Well, that too, but um, no, because it's um, it's it's closer to where I'm ultimately going to end up, anyways. Well, I was you say, know, what are the key boat ramps down there? I never think I've asked you that. I, I, Whites used to be one. Um, yeah, not not White's Ferry. They they charge you money. Okay, they didn't used to charge it. Like, again, I'm showing my age when I used to go there. But I'm on the Virginia side too. So like when I was growing up, I McKinney actually lived boat in ramp. McKinney, That's okay. a good spot if you have enough water. Point of rocks. I used to point of rocks in McKimmy. Okay, I, I, that's what it's called. It's called McKimmy boat ramp. I, you know what I'm talking about? No idea. Where is that at? It's directly um, when you go across uh, the Route 15 bridge from maryland you make a right and then another right it's a dirt road route 15 it's the ugliest looking boat ramp there is okay so you could die there will be methods. it's every man for themselves 
Do you want do you want a chair or something, dude? You can go grab no. a chair. No, I'm good. We're we're not live. Uh here's Brunswick. Uh, yeah. Oh shit. I'm not even sharing my screen. That would help. Uh Brunswick's been fishing pretty good too. I was thinking like the Brunswick and Pointer Rocks and White's Ferry are the only three I know of in this area. And I Brunswick's guess... boat ramp. Uh, I shouldn't say that that McKimmy boat ramp's beat up because that Brunswick boat ramp. I mean, you have to almost be up on plane to get out of there. Oh, dude, it's it's. I'll say it's dog shit. Like it is bad. I mean, I don't I don't understand that. I mean, uh, if it's high enough, you wouldn't think anything of it. But you can't just use that boat ramp all the time. I just don't know why they can't like, why don't you just dam off both sections and then drain it and clean it out and make it nicer or put a, I don't know, put something across here so you can get to the main river. It's just weird. Like we don't have really good boat ramps on the main part of this Potomac river right here. Um, Oh, is this McKinney right here? No, no, that's the, that's the Brunswick campground. That's a pretty good boat ramp. I got to find 11. All right. This is annoying now. I cannot find go, uh, it. Go, go down to Route 15. Where the Point hell of Rocks. Route 15? Oh, Point of Rocks. Okay. Point there it is. And then go across the uh, bridge. This one right here, Chesapeake Bay Canal right here? Nope. That's the Point of Rocks. Uh, that's the boat ramp for Point of Rocks. I mean, that's a really good boat ramp, but when the water's low, it's like a pinball machine out there. Mm-hmm. No, go, keep going up, upriver. Oh, upriver. Yeah, and go across the bridge right there, Point of Rocks. Uh, See the bridge? Yeah, the Virginia side. Yeah, zoom in for me a little bit more. And then um, you see that see that area right there? Yeah. That's McKimmy. Let me try 3D. Hold on. It doesn't have the sign there anymore. I don't know what happened to the road sign. Uh, yeah, that, that is weird. I mean, this is honestly the side that I used to launch from as a kid with our little, um, aluminum boat. Um, uh -huh. that does not help at all. Sorry guys about that. I thought the 3d would actually help make it pop a little bit more, but it doesn't, but yeah, this is a dirt ramp right here. But I do remember as like a kid, um, fishing and using this boat ramp on the Maryland side, just because it was nicer when they had water to it. Uh, but then like, so the Monocacy one is actually probably one of the better ones than on the river right down at that well stretch. you know why the monocacy is so good point of rocks is nice too but monocacy separates the non-boaters from boaters oh i didn't know that yeah so there's an actual boat ramp and parking area and then there's a parking area for just like pedestrians people that are walking on the towpath is this right here i'll go down a little bit Oh, so it's that's right. just the, that's the train bridge. Oh, there it is. There it is right there. See it? I never knew there was a boat ramp at Monocacy till now. Yeah, that is. So that's, a, that's a really good boat ramp. I mean, I, I think it's nice. I mean, it's got, you know, it's got a. Um, there's facilities there. It's good parking. Um, but the only problem with that boat ramp is the boat ramp's a little steep, but whatever. I mean, but you is can't it, have everything, but it pretty much has deep water access then most of the time. Uh, no, I mean, the, the water can get so shallow, you, you can't really put a boat in there sometimes. Okay. Right now, it's uh, it's doable. And then Seneca has a place, right? Yeah, Seneca. Seneca, you could pretty much go in at any time, go in and out of. Now, and guys, uh, for our podcast listeners right now, um, we have little Seneca up right here. I think this is also called Algonquian State Algonquian Park. Alg Alg Algonquian is on the Virginia side. Yeah, and so right here. Algonquin. Go across the river. That's the um, that right there is a, a some type of water treatment planter. It just pulls water. So this is Virginia on this side. Uh huh. And then this is Maryland. Yep. There's Seneca right there. Yep. There's the aqueduct. When when does this place start actually catching on fire? This lower end, because I'd have to think because it's deeper. Everyone in Leesburg talks about this is the place you can actually run a big boat. When does this get good here? Um. Or does it ever in get the good? Fall. It can. It can get pretty good in the fall. You want to go up river, or go to down the, down the dam too, down river a little bit there, and try those rocks. Right. See right in there. Right in here. Try just above it. Okay. So this big eddy right in here. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that with the kayak at some point, too. That looks really neat. Yeah, I just, I, I know, like, we've, we've talked, I've never even talked about all the boat ramps and the access points, because that makes sense about Point of Rock, so I, I completely spaced on that when I told people, like, 
Um, yeah, point of rocks, anything I think what would you say above point of rocks is suspect to like having issues with boats entering the water, depending on the water level. Um, yeah, you have lander boat ramp up above, uh, point of rocks. And then after point of rocks, you have, I mean, lander, you have Brunswick's boat ramp and then you go further up and then you get up around Harper's Ferry where the Shenandoah is. And then the next boat ramp up, up there on the Maryland side is Dargan, Dargan's Bend. And that's a that's a deep pool, right? At Dargan's. Yeah. Have you fished there at all lately? Or are you officially? Are you no, I went up there this uh, this summer when the water came up, and um, I didn't think much of it. And then, uh, you know, at some point in time, I'll go back up there and try it again. Because I'll go up there in the winter time. I heard Dargan is supposed to have some walleye in it too, like that that deep pool. It's got there. musky in it. Oh, he's oh wow! Is that where you caught that musky? Yeah. Earlier. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Shepherd Sound is supposed to have some musky too. Yep. Now, what um let me see like right there. Go move this back up here. Perfect. I just catch those by accident though. No, don't say that. Like you said you caught flathead by accident. And guess what? You got a new demographic. Soon you're gonna be buying musky equipment, flathead yeah, equipment. No. You're just gonna be catching mm-hmm. anything. Take anyone out. <laughs> so, those those darn smallmouth are a full time job, man. Like yeah, you'll catch so- them one day. You'll catch them one day real good. And then the next day you'll come out and the water's clearer than it was the day before. And then it's three inches lower and um, they've gone ghost on you. <laughs> they went somewhere else. How often is that an issue or not an issue, but how, how often do you have to do that and relocate them? It's, um, it's all the time. Oh, really? I feel like they, they'll bite somewhere better. Yeah. They might not be that far away, a mile away from where I was catching them, but you know, they'll be on the other shoreline or something. Yeah. That's how I feel. I mean, I, I feel like they, uh, they move around that much. I mean, they, they wolf pack dude. And they do, they, I mean, they do move more than largemouth by far, but like, and especially with this fall, when they start feeding up, like I would assume they start mm-hmm. moving even more. Right. I wonder if they've ever done any type of, um, any type of, uh, you know, uh, looked into it, but, you know, the state of Maryland, the, the, uh, biologists that, that, um, take care of the river up there, if they've ever, um, try to study how those fish move so i i know um not that information in particular but i know talking to like jeff little who's big on the susquehanna and stuff and, and mr sikorsky things like that that do other studies like there's the fish smallmouth will move a ton and depending on the river system they'll move miles and miles and miles um and and they'll even rotate in an area uh jeff little talked about he would snorkel and he would just sit in parts of the river and watch and see how these big smallmouth will start at one rock and then they'll just move to another rock and they'll just do a cycle. It's almost like a territorial thing. And so he speculates that he thinks big smallmouth are like territorial. And if you spook them, don't worry because they'll come back to that rock again. Mm-hmm. Like they just do some kind of like big circle pattern. So they'll hit that one rock and they'll go to another. It's almost like that's where they're hunting. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I think they definitely move a lot. And I think the hardest thing with guys that don't fish the river is the current flow the water clarity and how much that affects them in such a short period of time like a great anecdote i have is that last tournament i fished on the shenandoah in practice i was catching them dead nut center of the river on some deeper rock but the flow is a little bit more and early in the morning i had to catch them right on the bank and then as the sun came up and the wind started blowing more, then they slowly positioned more dead into the river. Mm-hmm. And if you're not open to that mentally of like, okay, you know, just because I caught them here yesterday doesn't mean they're there. You'll fish right over them. Yeah. I mean, uh, they'll also, um, you could throw a spinnerbait all day long and they just watch it go over their head. Then you throw a uh, jerk bait out there and they'll grab the jerk bait. It's so frustrating. It's so freaking frustrating. Yeah. And, and then it comes down to like, like, what do you, what do you switch to? Do you go to like, to like, so I threw swim baits and I like throwing swim baits. The biggest issue I have with them is they'll eat the tails off of them. And then in a tournament situation, do you put a, do you put a belly treble on them or not? Like, I feel weird about that because I know I can hook more of them, but they'll swallow a swim bait. If you, if you put a belly treble, in my opinion, a lot of times you're going to gut hook a big, a big fish. Mm-hmm. But then you'll, you'll catch the side swipers too, which is the problem. That's why I generally like to go with like the crankbaits, like you said, because I just know that at least if they side swipe it, I get them. 
but then that's an ordeal if you're in a kayak versus a boat to try to like you know flip a raging crackhead smallmouth with trebles on their face right yeah. in between your crotch crotch region um, yeah but that's another reason i i feel weird about fishing a fluke because i just don't feel like i have the hookup percentage compared to a jerk bait if that makes sense like i don't know mm -hmm. I, i've never figured out the jerk bait thing like a well, i mean i had one the other day it was a big fish i threw out into uh, like that the area I, we were talking about in uh white's ferry right there I threw out in an area similar to that, and um, I caught a few fish, caught a couple on spinnerbait, and then um, I hooked one. I don't. I, it was some type of river monster that grabbed my uh, jerk bait. It was oh, at one of those pointer seventy eights, and when it grabbed it, it just started pulling drag. It was a, it was a smallmouth, but I mean, it was it was big. And um, how in the hell do they come off? I mean, six I hooks. And they just come off. I mean, it's almost like they're like, yeah, no, nah, not today. I'm done. Hey, small and, and, they, and they just head shake themselves off. It's incredible. The, their ability to fight um, is just why I'm so addicted to them. I think everyone is so addicted to them, especially when they go airborne. And and um, how they how they bite too. Sometimes they bite very aggressively, and they just don't care. They just they just take that whole entire jerk bait. And then sometimes they're just grabbing the back end of it, and and. Um, Almost like they just can't help themselves. They don't really want to eat, but what the heck? There it is. I'll kill that too and eat it, you know? That, um, yeah, that's the hardest thing about them. They're very just, temperamental on, on how they how they bite. They're temperamental. They slash a lot more than other, the other fish. And then when you hook them, you really got to worry about them jumping, especially in shallow water. Mm -hmm. uh, when I fished Lake Champlain and I fished... Um, Lake Ch uh, Chautauqua, I think it's what it's called in upstate New York, where they have some depth and you hook one in like six, seven, 10 feet of water, they won't initially go airborne and they'll dog you, which is a little bit easier to deal with. But on the river, like a lot of times, like, and you know this too, like as soon as you stick them, boom, they might go straight up. And, and then you got to really teach. And this is something I don't have to struggle with, but you probably do on a daily basis, like how you keep the line tight on them. Because if you yeah. have your client, and I'm assuming that you stick them and they raise this rod straight up in the air and start pulling them up to the surface, man, you're just asking for them to throw hooks. Yeah, it's 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 really tough, man, because they're it happens so fast, and and once they get into that current too, I mean, a three or four pound smallmouth, I, I who knows how hard they're actually pulling because mm -hmm. they're in that current, you know, they're pulling drag. You have to have a real smooth drag. Um, hopefully, you're. Um, your line hasn't been nicked or, or, um, you know, there, there isn't some type of flaw in the, in the leader line or something, uh, from, you know, from prior use before hooking that big fish. Uh, there's so many factors. I mean, it's, it's tough. I, um, when you lose them, I mean, how and do, I hate losing them. I hate losing them more than I like catching them. How do you, how do you play them? Do you have something you tell your clients? What do you tell your clients when they hook them? Just keep the line tight. And then if if it's you know depending on the um, the type of bait too like those spinner baits keep the rod tip down. Uh, um, that that does that does help them that that does help a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Keep yeah. the rod tip down, and then um, if oh and and if if they're if they're fighting them, however they're however they're reeling them in, and they got that line tight, uh, just tell them to keep the line tight and just go with the fish. Don't don't force the fish, because if you um. Have you ever seen someone do an abrupt uh, when they have the when they have the uh, rod in the air and then they're reeling, and then and then they go to the left or the right real hard? That's like the worst thing you can do with a smallmouth. It's it, um, they throw the hooks. It's they, almost like you dislodge the hook out of their mouth somehow. Dude, they are just notorious for throwing hooks. And, and you're right about you got to keep the rod tip down and you have to play them. Like I really feel like you got to wear them out. And and especially like depending on the type of tournament, whether you're going to net them or whatever, you know, figure out where your net guy is and get situated so you can take them to the net. Um, yeah. Oh, and and also keep them away from the bottom of the boat on these aluminum boats because they'll rub that line off on the bottom of the boat and, and snap the line. That's a really good tip. I didn't even think of that. that yeah, you want to keep uh, and you always want to keep about a rod's length of line out there. Don't reel them real close. Keep about a rod's length of line and How let that rod and reel. Do all the work and just just hold the hold on. How many people actually do that? Like try to reel the fish onto like the hook. Like yeah, uh, it happens. Uh, a big fish will break the uh, break uh, the rod. 
Yeah, like I imagine. Like, have you had a rod break it this year? Yeah, I I broke one. It wasn't a big fish. It was just it was um You're it was kind of cool a big one. <laughs> it was it was kind of I mean it wasn't a small fish, but I mean it wasn't like a um you know, it was like a 15 or 16 inch fish. And um I set the hook on him and I was reeling him in. And um it was it had been a good day too, and my rod broke. It was at the very end of the trip. Um it was raining outside and the weather was terrible. Uh, my my trolling motor batteries by the end of the day, because the water was up high, were pretty much dead. Um, and then the rod breaks. Hmm. All right. So, uh, you know what? We're going to do something here. I do. Uh, so, guys, if you don't know, I did a live stream about two weeks ago with Jake Spate and Tackle. And a bunch of people gave me some free shit. And I'm going to be doing some giveaways right now, uh, making sure that we don't have something right here. Uh, okay, good. Nothing to cheat on. So, uh, Jeff, do you know, like, do you got a spitball about how big this fish is here without giving it away? Yeah, I know how big that fish is. Okay. Okay, guys. So this right here, I'm going to, I'm going to actually going to post this picture on my YouTube channel and on Facebook. If you're not watching this, whoever can guess the size of this fish and whoever gets it the closest, Jeff, you mean the length? Yeah. The length and the weight. You got to okay. guess the length and the weight. Whoever gets that correctly. We're going to do a, a poll, and whoever wins that's going to win a gift pack from me from Fishing the DMV. What you have to do is you have to comment below on Facebook or my YouTube channel, one or the other, and we're going to see it. And I'll have Jeff try to pick the winner that says, like, yep, this person's the closest here. Because that one right there is an absolutely beautiful – the belly on that thing is awesome. That is a mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful fish. And that I'm fish was caught with a spinnerbait. Oh, that's such a great he, way to catch him too. He smacked it immediately. Oh my goodness. It was the first cast into that hole. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. So, okay. Do you think that the river will ever be able to produce like a six pound plus smallmouth? Do you think that'll ever happen? Oh yeah. I do. Spoilers guys. That one's not six pounds. So don't guess that. But anyway, point is like, do you think we're going to get there? And that's, that's really cool. Cause the fact is like, that was used to only be like the Susquehanna could do that. Or well, whatever. I'm telling you, um, some people watching this will probably think I'm crazy or be like, uh, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But, um, I mean, uh, fish that are 22 plus 21 and you know, almost that are 21, almost 22 inches and 22 plus inch fish. It probably depends on the time of year you catch them. I mean, if you catch that fish at the uh, right at the right time in late fall before going into winter, and they're the heaviest they're possibly going to get before um, you know th they just um, hunker down for the winter, you know, and they go into like a uh, an eddy, and you know they just start doing their winter thing. I mean, that fish is pushing six pounds. A uh, hundred percent. I think it's all beginning time. Um, of um, spring, just before they spawn. They're full of uh, what eggs, mm -hmm. and they're eating. Those fish, a fish that's over 22 inches long, under 23, but over 22 inches long, it's got to weigh six pounds. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, that the wintertime spring is, is a great time to catch the PB. But I'd also have to say my favorite time of year to fish is probably the fall. When those oh, fish fall time's great. It's just, it's it, just the, the weather. It's perfect. Everything, man. All yeah. the animals are alive. There's animals running around on the shorelines. There's deer everywhere. You hear the, the turkey and the... Um, and the um, you know, on the shorelines too, in the trees. You yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a picture of a fish in here. I don't know if you can pull it up on um, Facebook. Yeah. Um, I, I personally believe, uh, see if you can keep going, keep going. And um, let me see if uh, it's a um, guy, the guy by the name of Larry who caught it this spring. And that fish was, over 22 inches long okay springtime so let's really let's see dude this one right here though which one this one's i like the color that's on that. that's the fish i'm holding it oh that's the fish okay there you go that's the fish i don't know why that i don't know why some of my pictures are scrambled and they're not with the um here there you on that same row all the way to the left right there that fish right there was over 22 inches long wow that fish was um, the best we could get. It was uh, at 22 and a quarter. Dude, that is so thick. That fish would be uh, six pounds if it was um, fully, uh, if it was, uh, that fish had just spawned. 
Oh, gotcha. So there you that, have it, guys. There is a six pound smallmouth swimming right that down fish, the stomach. That fish was over five. That was over five without eggs like that. Like, right. Yeah, right man. There. I mean, that fish was that big. I mean, look how big its mouth is. Yeah. Dude. I think that's the same one right there, too. That's a beautiful picture right there. I like that one. Wow. Guys, Upper Potomac River. I mean, I, I, I can't say anything else. I can't top that. Guys, Upper Potomac River, get the hell out there with Jeff Green this fall. What are you doing? Okay, forget finances. Forget what your wife wants. Get out <laughs> there right now. Okay, make yourself happy. Treat yourself. You know, I'm working hard. I'll always do this too. Um, you know, you mentioned Jeff Little, and he he also um, promotes it, and and um, he wants people to 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 learn how to do it and get out there. And I mean, the the uh, Mid Atlantic region is it's a three hundred sixty five day a year fishery if if it doesn't if it doesn't freeze. I mean, you know, granted, there's a few days here and there that could be just it's just too bad to go out. And you know, if it's freezing, you really can't fish because your gear's going to freeze up too. But when the days are, aren't below freezing winter time man mm. um people that go out and hunt i have some some guys customers that go out with me and they hunt and they're like oh i don't know if i could go out in december or january i'm like will you hunt i said it's no different just wear your hunting clothes but you'll be in a boat yeah you're not swimming like i, I think <laughs> but i mean the like winter time i'm telling you there's giants in the river there's oh, fish that we just haven't even seen yet yeah I mean, I, because, I think there's some big ones in there. But because they just haven't made that mistake yet. Uh, what I, I was watching a hunting show recently, and um, they joke around and they call the big bucks vampires. That's what these that's what these smallmouth are. They're vampires, man. And every now and then they mess up, and that they come out when they shouldn't be coming out. You know, like during the day, middle of the day, uh, it's cloudy out. There's some type of storm system coming in. And I guess they take advantage of the situation or think they're going to, and wham, you catch one. I like that vampires. I really like that. That's a really cool way to look, think about them. So, I mean, because because they are they're, they're nocturnal in the summertime. Those real big smallmouth. How do you think they get so big? Why do you think they go nocturnal? Um, survival. I would say. I mean, if if you see um if you watch the birds long enough, the eagles and the uh, osprey, um, that would make me hide under a rock until it was dark too. That is you know true. how terrifying that would be something coming from above and grabbing you out of the water and especially when the river gets shallow like that i could definitely see that they they, they do that and i think that's got to be something with the forage species there's got to be something that comes out at night and be, uh, it becomes more nocturnal in the summertime that they're well they, they there is crawdads crawdads come out at night oh, crayfish okay. crawdads crawfish however you want to say it i call them crawdads they come if you've ever been in a creek in the summertime go out at night and flash your light they come out from under the rocks that and they're just cruising around that makes a lot I used to of catch them with my grandfather that, out in oklahoma that, at night that makes a lot of sense and then those um those um stone cats or the uh mad toms they call them those little tiny catfish they're like three four inches long they probably come out too i think the mad toms i think i think it also has to do the moon phase too i wonder how much the moon actually plays into that when you have that that full moon versus the new moon cycles as well um, I don't know. It did. I, we could talk about that forever. It's freaking awesome. But uh, do you have anything else going in the store or anything else that's new and exciting? Yeah, I'm going to have, uh, I mean, eventually, um, uh, I'm going to have, I, like I said earlier, uh, for SWFA baits, I'm going to have the, uh, Z man products available, but I'm going to be selling the, uh, the Ned rigs. And, um, I'm going to try to have as, uh, uh, you know, big, um, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of different colors for people options um i'm gonna have the z-man um chatter baits and i'm gonna start carrying those uh strike king uh 1.5s awesome yeah uh, so sometime in the future good deal and then do you still have times for people to book with you in the next month or two or are you, are yeah you, you know about? right now the, the the one day that i i promoted just recently on online uh because it, it's just a great idea i mean who doesn't want a three-day weekend right so Halloween falls on um, the 31st of October falls on a Monday. So if you want to have a three day weekend, give me a call and take off Monday. I like that. I like that. And we'll a lot. go fishing. 
And guys, you know, link to uh, link to Shallow Water Adventures will be in the episode description. As always, please give his Facebook page and YouTube channel a like and a subscribe. It really appreciate his, him for his algorithm. And then, guys, if you could please smash the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would really help Fishing the DMV's YouTube algorithm. The other thing is, too, if you could start leaving a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts to help getting us trending. We just broke into the top 200 fishing podcasts out of 500 in the United States. So we're 200 out of 500. Not bad, but I want to get a couple more uh, comments. Whether you love me or hate me, you can give me a zero star rating if you think I'm a bigot and you don't like me, or you can give me a five star rating. I appreciate it. I don't care. But please give me some kind of traction there to help so I can grow this thing a little bit bigger. Again, this is Fishing the DMV, and we are the fastest growing uh, fishing show in the greater DC metropolitan area. We'll see you next time. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV. With your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.